Iron Rebellion pilots, this is Waffles, bringing you a progress log video for Iron Rebellion version 0.9280. This version brings three new major updates, two additional mech classes, a revamped repair system, and new sounds and visual effects for damage, both inside and outside your mech. Let's jump right in. Multiple mech classes have been one of the most highly requested features of Iron Rebellion, and they're finally here. You'll have a total of three to choose from now, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. Let's take a closer look. The Scout Class The Scout Class is single-handedly the fastest and most maneuverable mech in the game. With only two repair sectors, it's the fastest repairing mech as well. With so much speed though, the Scout has the least amount of armor. It has no sprim boost pack, but can still boost vertically. The Scout has very little thermal mass, so it requires very little energy when using those boosters. With the new improved venting system, it also dissipates heat very quickly. Also, it can only equip one weapon. The Scout class is exactly what it looks like. Fast, nimble, and engineered to get you in and out of situations in a blink of an eye. Whether capturing points faster than anyone else on the map, harassing the opposing team, or as its name implies, to scout for and relay enemy positions, this is one mech that will keep you busy, and adrenaline pumping. That doesn't mean the scout is your typical harasser. In the right hands, it can more than hold its own in a fight, and even take down a heavy in close quarters, as it can run circles around one, literally, if you can close the gap. Having piloted a heavy myself, I can tell you right now there's nothing more demoralizing than being taken down by a mech a third your size. The Assault Class Being the perfect balance of maneuverability, firepower, and armor, the Assault Mech is built to deal damage as well as take it, and can hold its own while pushing the front line. It can equip a total of two weapons. Equipped with a substantial sprint boost pack, the Assault Mech can quickly get in and out of enemy held positions, as well as tactically maneuver during combat. The Assault Class is good for getting most jobs done, but does not excel at any one task. The Assault Class is great if you're good for wearing multiple hats and can switch roles as needed. The Bread and Butter Medium Assault Mech is a jack of all trades, but master of none. That may sound like a bad thing, but it's not. It actually makes it the most balanced and versatile class in the game, able to adapt to almost any situation. Able to equip two weapons at once, you can rig the Assault Mech as a deadly sniper, a close quarters master, or any combination you want to experiment with. If you're new to Iron Rebellion, we highly recommend you start with this class and branch out to the others once you've grown accustomed to the controls and mechanics of the game. The Heavy Class The Heavy is the largest, heaviest, and most armored class in the game. It's built to take and hold strategic points on the map. While its name and appearance may sound like it's invincible, it is not a bullet sponge and can be easily outmaneuvered in combat. While it does have both sprint and vertical boosters, they're very limited. It also has additional thermal mass, so those bursts take quite a toll on this class, making it fast to heat up and long to cool down. With all that junk in the trunk, the Heavy also has the most repair sectors to manage, as well as repair, so keep your eyes peeled for extra repair canisters whenever you can. Piloting a Heavy is one of the most satisfying feelings in Iron Rebellion. On the receiving end, nothing gives you quite as much of an oh shit moment as accidentally bumping into one of these thick boys. It moves and turns the slowest of the three classes. Its minimal sprint boosters are more for evading fire than traversal, but what it lacks in mobility, it more than makes up for in armor, allowing you to take hit after hit after hit and just keep going. If you take the time to memorize the location of repair canisters and keep those sectors topped off, you can push and hold strategic points very easily. Just don't let the name Heavy get to your head, as you're not exactly invincible. With your slow speed and obvious size, expect your enemies to chip away at you from afar, so still use cover and your team whenever you can as always. Lastly, although your armor can take quite a serious hit, watch your back for enemies trying to flank your position. The devs did an amazing job on these three mechs and their balance, so we hope you enjoy playing with the new roster. Next, the new and improved repair module. The repair module has received a major overhaul and is now completely digital. With multiple mech classes and different amounts of repair sectors for each, this new module has been re-engineered to work with all of them. With a larger digital touchscreen, repairs should also be far easier and faster to manage. Just be aware, like before, not to accidentally select fully repaired sectors during operation, as you can end up wasting repair canisters. Lastly, internal and external damage, both visually and with sound effects. 
The devs have added a robust amount of damage indicators both for you, but also for your opponents. Even if you can't keep your eye on your structural integrity, you'll be able to both see and hear when you're taking one too many hits, allowing you to take cover, repair, and re-engage. Keep in mind though, your opponents will see an equal amount of visual indicators outside your mech as well, including fire, smoke, sparks, and structural damage, and an enemy with a keen eye can certainly pick you out in a group and focus you down. I personally had one entertaining experience where a heavily damaged enemy retreated behind a hill to try to reposition and flank me. And yeah, while I couldn't see his mech behind the hill, I could see the billowing smoke above him moving, and was able to prevent the flank. It's one example of many where this new seemingly cosmetic change can make games far more dynamic and tactical. The devs have some exciting new features to the cockpits coming in the future, so keep a close eye for when that drops in beta and a future build. Speaking of betas, if you love Iron Rebellion and want to be part of our amazing community, check out our Discord channel in the description. Once in, you can find more information about our weekly beta playtests, hosted by the devs, share feedback, and get to know our passionate pilots. If you like this content, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future content. You can find me in the game as Waffles and on my YouTube channel. I'll see you all on the battlefield. Waffles out.